Good morning. Today is Tuesday, June the 20th. The time right now in Singapore is 3 minutes to 7 in the morning. And overnight, we have observed that US markets are closed for the Juneteenth holiday, which is a brand new holiday enacted into law by President Biden uh, in 2021. And uh, officially today is possible, possibly you can take it that it is the start of the trading week, although overseas markets remains open yesterday, but they were basically quite quiet okay so today we are going to refocus on the u.s markets again and uh, we have already seen last weekend uh leading in most u.s equity markets continuing to charge into new territory in terms of new highs in fact the s p 500 and the national 100 has recorded new 14 months high uh although the dow jones is on the verge of breaking into a new high of course right now it has not done that yet so will the market continue to trade higher this week let's take a look now in the four hours time frame in which you are seeing right now on the chart in front of you that is the dow jones itself and the dow jones is just a whisker away from taking out the year high which is at 34,712.3 the highest traded on friday was 34,588.7 uh, so we are just a hair breath away from challenging the year high which was last traded in January of this year but the market actually closed on a weak note and that can be under uh, that can be understood as the because the market is going to a long weekend so the, those who have actually bought uh, are eager to pocket uh, some of the gains and take some money off the table before the weekend so that can be understood but if this uh, profit taking accelerate to the downside i think there is a risk that the market may actually pull a bit lower uh in at least pos pos possibly the early part of the uh tonight's trading in new york uh the ideal level for the market to pull back in my opinion is 33,824 to 34,116 that level actually represents a 23 percent pullback to at most at 38 percent pullback of the most recent rally from 32,586 so if that's the case, I think the market may have enough momentum to actually try to take out the year high, which I last mentioned was 34,712. So this could actually set the stage for possibly the market going up to challenge the April 2022 high at 35,492.2. So that remains a possibility, but there is also the possibility the market may have already decided enough of this rally, maybe it's is is best to actually take more profit off the table and that could cause the market to actually reverse although right now we don't have any sign that the market is about to reverse just yet but the the possibility is always there in the s p 500 we also saw earlier on i mentioned the market has gone to a new 14 months high and the high trade on friday was 4448.5 and this price is actually within the bracket of prices, which I think the market may be vulnerable to the downside. And that level is 4,426.3 to 4,517.1. That level represents an area of vulnerability, in my opinion. And if we do see a pullback, that's very uh, possible that the market may come back and retest the most recent low at 4,337.85. So if that's the case, maybe that will be the same thing as per the Dow Jones uh, outlook. Maybe the market will actually do a nano more uh, one more rally beyond the 4448.5 levels so let's see whether that actually pans out in the nick uh in the nasdaq 100 of course this market has been leading the charge higher all the while this year and the high traded so far a uh, brand new high for the year is 15,284.65 uh, before it closes on a slightly weaker note. And if we do see a pullback, ideal level to see this pullback will be somewhere between 13,906 to 14,428.5. So this area will be a great level to actually consider uh, taking up more long position if you are of the opinion that a market has enough to go on uh beyond the 15,284.65 that we have seen so far so this is the target area the target area is 15,270.86 to 16,115 so again this is where we are right now the market incidentally has taken out the last march high at 15,265.4 okay so do watch out for the possibility of a pullback before the market rally one more time and do watch out as the market go ever higher the market is very vulnerable to very aggressive profit taking going forward of course
Now let's put our attention to Asia. We can see the Nikkei actually registered a new high for the year at 33,772.9 overnight. And uh, this is where we are right now. If the, if the uh, uh, Wall Street actually see a pullback, we may also see the same thing happening in the Nikkei because the Nikkei has been on a tear of late and it has gone up by the most as far as the G7 economies are concerned. This is about the only equity markets in the G7 uh, economy uh, that has actually shown to have actually had fundamentals behind it because lately we can see that growth are coming back to the Japanese economy and that is on a relative basis of course and if we do see a pullback the area of uh, possible support lies possibly within the 31,000 to 32,000 levels so look do watch out for this possibility of a pullback maybe to challenge the most recent low at 31,420 okay over in Hong Kong uh, we can see that the Hang Seng Index has actually gone uh, much higher beyond the 20,000 levels for the first uh, 20,000 levels for the first time uh, since May and the high traded over, uh, on uh, last Friday was 30,155.9 and overnight we can see that the price did not continue higher northwards uh, because there is a pivot point here which I have underlined in blue and this line is 20,286.5 so the market has previously have difficulty crossing this level and this time around it does seem that it is also having the same impact let's see whether uh, later on in the week the market will actually take out this level if it does then the market have a good chance of challenging the much higher at 21,005 but in the meantime if we see a pullback the pullback may actually give us a chance to buy on the deep here and the level here ideally uh, will be 19,100 to 19,350 levels which will offer you us a 50% pullback and that may actually set the stage for another assault towards the much high of 21,000. Over in the mainland Chinese equity index, the CSI 300, we can see prices actually rally just under the 4,000 levels and then stop at 3,967.9 before it sees a pullback yesterday. And this level has been highlighted previously as an area of potential profit taking and the level is 3,937.1 to 39,073.9. So did we did see a pullback yesterday. Will this pullback uh, result in a, an extended pullback? So if we does, then the next level to actually cons uh, uh, consolidate before the market extend higher is somewhere between 38, uh, 3,870 to 3,974. So this area will be a good area to pick up some more long position because it does look like the market may have enough momentum to actually go even higher beyond the 4,000 level sign. Over in energy markets, we can see that the crude oil prices has actually passed, uh, ran past the $70 per barrel, and that is a positive development. And that's, uh, the overnight high is $72.22, and this will lay the groundwork for a further extension in the price of crude oil. In particularly, we are talking about the West Texas Intermediate Crude uh, or the, the or the WPI for short. So if we do see a pullback ideally between $69.50 to $69 or even $70, that area will be a good level to pick up some more long because this market does look like it have enough to actually challenge the uh, much higher here of uh, uh, $74.70 and perhaps even higher towards the $80 per barrel target here, okay? And over in precious metals, we can see precious metal has actually pulled back uh, yesterday uh, since hitting a marginal, uh, uh, hitting a, a pocket of resistance at uh, 1967 uh, just under $1,968 per ounce. And we did see a pullback. But this market does look like it may have enough to go higher just marginally beyond the test or uh, basically to test $1,983.50 which was last traded on June the 2nd and if that's the case this area actually represents an area of selling opportunity in my opinion and that area is $1,976.40 40 cents to $1,988.50 thereabout and that should see the market coming back down to test the 19 1900 levels so this is actually setting up to be a long-term buying opportunity if that uh, that appears then I do look out for that possibility here I have an outlier here uh, 
this obviously may be a little bit too pessimistic, but if the market ever dip below $1,900, that will be an excellent buy in my opinion, because I do expect gold prices to stabilize sometime this month before we see a robust rally going into July. Okay, so do, do watch out for buying opportunity uh, uh, in both the gold and silver. Uh, in silver market, we can see that the silver has actually gone uh, higher to $24.21 for our on Friday itself, we see a bit of a pullback here, and uh, most likely the silver will be trading independent of gold. I think it may actually extend higher to $25 to $25.50 there about before we see a pullback. However, the timing is crucial here. If this market rally into $25 area towards the end of the month, do not attempt to sell this because that could represent an extension of this entire rally here for $22.68. However, if the market actually rally into this pocket of prices this week, leaving us another week before the month and then maybe there's a good opportunity here to sell. But in the meantime, be very careful selling silver. Uh, if you have to sell, I would suggest maybe sell, sell gold is better bet than sell silver because silver appears to be a lot, a lot firmer than gold right now. In currencies, we can see that the dollar basically has been coming off very aggressively, largely due to the fact that the, uh, the Federal Reserve has actually paused its interest rate cycle, whereas the other major currencies, including uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Bank of Canada, the ECB, and possibly this week, we probably will see the Bank of England or hiking interest rate, and that will put the dollar on the back foot, meaning to see the dollar will be under pressure to come off again. So in the meantime, we see a little bit of a rebound in the dollar index of a low of 101.58 on Friday. And if this market can actually go up a little bit more, ideally into 102.20 to 102.65 levels, that will present a selling opportunity because I do believe uh, this structure that we are seeing for all the way from a high of 104.61 appears to be a five wave structure and we are right now possibly making a fourth wave high and if that's the case we possibly will see another dip below 101.58 possibly to challenge the 100 levels that we have seen at the beginning of last month okay so do watch out for extended loss in the dollar and over in the euro dollars we can see as the dollar pulls back the other currencies managed to rally and in the euro dollar we can see euro dollar came uh to 109.70 on friday before it put, uh on thursday sorry on, on sorry on friday and then it pulls back and you can see uh extended pullback ideally to 108.55 to 108.90 that level will present us a buying opportunity very similar to the dollar index we do i do expect another rally beyond 109.70 perhaps to 111 okay uh the high here previously was 110.92 so maybe that will be a uh, obvious target for the market to gun for okay over in the sterling uh just remember tomorrow we have the release of the uk cpi numbers and sterling has been particularly strong this month uh even stronger than the euro dollar the high trader on friday was 128.50 now we see a bit of a pullback if the market continue to pull back even further ideal level to buy will be 126.70 to 127.40 levels because very similar to the uh, euro versus the dollar i do see a potential five wave rally here uh, right now we are possibly making a fourth wave pullback and if that's the case then a rally beyond 128.50 is a given and ideal target will be 130 even okay in the aussie we can see aussie has also extended very very much uh, all the way to just under uh, 69 cents and uh, this pullback if there's going to be a pullback uh, may result in a much deeper correction but in the meantime the momentum does suggest that if we do have a break of the nearby support uh, resistance here representing by this line over here then possibly we could see another rally uh, into the uh, 0.69 30 to 0 0.6980 levels. So this will be a much better level to sell if you are of the opinion that you have already bought and you want to take profit, this area will be a perfect area to take some money off the table. Okay, and over in the dollar versus Canadian, we can see the Canadian, the, uh, this chart here fully represents uh, the problem with the, the dollar itself. We have already seen a five wave pullback 
that has possibly already completed at 131.77 on Friday. What it means is that we probably, probably will see a technical rebound back to 133.80 levels. So if this is the case, I would love to see a three-wave rally here. And if it is in a structure of a corrective rally, then the 133.85 levels will represent the top target of this move here. Okay. And dollar yen, dollar yen has practically broken out of its previous resistance here and has charged into just under 142 in uh in the dollar versus the yen rate. And this level right now is getting to be quite interesting because uh somewhere between 141.63 to 143.55, a very wide range here. We're talking about a 200 pip uh, range here. The market could actually find a top here. So unlike the dollar rates that have gone down, the dollar versus the yen has actually gone back up. Uh, and largely due to the weakness of the Japanese yen, not so much the strength of the dollar, because we also know that the Bank of Japan last week has paused, uh, not paused, yes, basically uh, left its monetary policy unchanged, and it has been unchanged since 2016. Uh, it is currently a negative 0.1. So when you consider negative 0.1, when all the other major interest rate has actually gone even higher, you can see the why the yen is weak, and the yen is weak because its interest rate is still in stuck in negative territory okay so it will definitely will not allow the yen to rise uh, under these circumstances okay so over in the bitcoin we can see the bitcoin actually has caught a bit of a wind lately we can see that overnight uh, the market actually punched back up above $27,000 from a low of $24,756 last Thursday and just before uh, BlackRock announced that it is filing for an application for the Spot BTC uh, uh, ETF. So that is actually giving the market right now the confidence to take the cryptocurrencies higher and we can see Bitcoin has actually benefited from this move. Now remember just two weeks ago the SEC which is the Security Exchange Commission has sued both Binance and Coinbase and that has put a wet blanket on prices and we have seen prices go all the way to 24756 before all this latest news about BlackRock caused the market to rally. So will the market continue to rally? I think there's a very good chance. And if we do get a pullback, ideally somewhere between 25,600 to 25,900, that would be your last call to buy because I think the market is creating is getting ready to rally because we have seen this pattern many times we have the big boys coming to muscle into this space here. And of course the narrative will be all oh, everything's bad about crypto and prices got slammed down and I would not dismiss the idea that the SEC is working hand in glove with BlackRock to actually cause the market to come off and now the market has come off BlackRock just announced this surprise news that they are applying for an ETF now if BlackRock is in the market uh, it will be monumental because BlackRock is after all the largest asset manager in the world and they are using Coinbase now remember Coinbase has been sued by SEC and now BlackRock is using Coinbase as custodian so this all put together means we are likely to see even higher prices going forward watch this space in the meantime you take care and I'll come back to you with another update tomorrow bye bye take care